and see, we're going to look at the differences between belief and hope and faith. And we've discussed the, the relationship of faith when it comes to healing many, many, many times here in the evening services. And some people that we come across may take offense when we talk about that your faith can be a factor in your healing. If they don't like the concept that their faith can play a factor and be contributing to their healing or to their lack of healing or even worse, uh, they, you know, this can be very delicate. So tonight, this is going to be a little bit delicate. It's going to be a little bit heavy. But it's something I think we really need to cover tonight. And Jesus, he addressed it many times in Scripture about faith. You are healed because of your faith. But still, people don't want to hear that their lack of faith for their illness the illness of a loved one contributed to that illness or contributed to the time that it took for healing. So I understand the sensitivity of what I'm going to talk about tonight. But as Christians, we've got a belief system in our heads. And we often confuse what our belief system is in our heads or our faith. People believe that what they think with their minds is faith. What they read in the Bible and what they believe is faith. So we're going to see that faith and belief are very different tonight. So this is just the teaching. You know, I'm not trying to judge anybody. We're not trying to condemn anybody. Especially seeing how I'm as guilty as anybody that I know for my faith contributing to my healing because I'm having problems right now and I'm not healed of them and to be honest I haven't really prayed so much for healing because I just accept it and know that the Lord has got an answer in sight I'm just waiting for the doctors to get involved because <laughs> they're going to be a part of my healing. God put them there for a reason. God trained them and educated them and equipped them and prepared them for when I walked in the door that they could do their part in trying to heal me. Now they can't heal me but they can at least prepare my body so that God can heal me. So when you became a Christian, when you were born again, that involves the renewing of your mind. But faith is not of the mind. Faith is of the heart. And that's what we need to get straight. Because Christians don't understand that there's a difference between faith and belief. You know, believing with all of your mind and knowing all the scriptures, believing the scriptures to be true, you know, that's all good. But the spirit behind the belief that's what's missing. That's the heart. That's what brings about faith. Some people get offended when thinking that maybe their own sin causes their illness. Let me make it clear right now that every sickness is not the result of somebody's sin. And somebody's sin is not going to result in a sickness. That is not true. But it is a possibility, though it does happen. So we need to address that. We need to look at that. But that's sin, uh, sin is not the root of all illness. This world, this wicked world we live in, is. So I'll do my clicker. So the first scripture we want to look at tonight is Matthew 9 28. Got it on the screen there. I'm going to read this to you, make a few comments. It's talking about Jesus. It says, when he had come into the house, the blind man came to him. The blind man came to him. And Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? Do you believe 
that I am able to do this. So point blank, Jesus is asking these blind men, do you believe that I am able to heal you? And they responded with, yes, Lord. So Jesus is basically putting these, the faith of these blind men to the test. He's testing to see if they have faith that he can heal them. Because in the next verse, it says, Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, may it be done to you. So if they really did not have faith, there would not have been any healing. It says, According to your faith, be healed. And their eyes were opened. So because their eyes were open, it showed that they had faith. But Jesus put the burden of proof on these blind men to show that they had faith. Did they believe or did they have faith that he could heal them? Sometimes it's our lack of faith that's the problem in us receiving our healing. We try so desperately, we're praying, we're reading healing scriptures, still not getting healed. We believe that we can get healed. That our faith is keeping us from getting healed. The mind says we can be healed, but our heart is not there yet. And if you're thinking, how can a Christian not have faith? You know, after all, we're all believers. We all go to a church. We're all involved in many ministries at a church. We know the word, we know the healing scriptures, we even teach them sometimes. We confess our belief that Jesus can heal us, but that doesn't mean that they have faith. First of all, faith is not constant. Faith is alive. Faith can be up one minute and down the next minute. It's not constant. Just because you have it one time doesn't mean you're going to have faith the next time. So faith is something we need to better understand. It's not something on a mental level, but it's something that's in a spiritual level. It's in our hearts. This is what Hebrews 11, 1 says. And I think we all know Hebrews 11, 1. It says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and proof of things not seen. I think we all know that scripture. So faith is the substance of what we hope for. Faith is the assurance. There's a difference between what you're hoping for and faith. They're not the same thing. Faith is the foundation. Faith is the substance. Faith is the assurance for what you are hoping for. And if all that you have is hope, then you don't have faith. So many of us are hoping for something. You know, we're hoping for healing. You know, I'm hoping for healing. We know that Jesus can heal. We hope that Jesus will heal. We're hoping for the healing. We're praying for the healing. But we aren't receiving the healing yet. Because we're still at hope. We're not at faith yet. We've got to get to faith. Hope, hope is always about the future. Faith is right now. Faith is seeing spiritually right now that you are healed. Hope is seeing in the future that you're going to be healed. So when people say that they're waiting on healing to take place, that's a red flag to me. When they say they're waiting for healing, waiting for healing to manifest because there's no expectancy there when you're waiting for healing to take place. There's no pursuit going to receive that healing and to acquire that healing. You know, you're waiting for whenever Jesus gets the time, you're next on the list. Number 117, receive your healing. It doesn't work that way. So waiting shows a lack of faith to me. Because faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the proof of things not seen. When we are talking about faith, we're going into the 
spiritual realm, not into the realm of what's in your head. Because we believe it, because we see it, but faith demands that we believe before we see it. There's a reality, and then there's spiritual faith. And this is why people say that they have faith, because they believe. They know the scriptures. They study the scriptures. They know their Lord. They have a relationship with their Lord. But they're just hoping for the faith to take place. So they're looking for that God kind of faith that's going to bring the hope. And if God says that he's going to give you his promises, he says he's going to give you all of his promises, well, he's not a liar. He's going to give you all of his promises. They're all going to come to pass. Jump to Mark 10. There we go. Mark 10, verse 16. This is an example of faith. It says, Then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him, and a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, he's the son of Timaeus, I guess, Timaeus, he was sitting beside the road. So the fame of Jesus is spread everywhere. Everybody knows that Jesus is this amazing man, a rabbi, is traveling throughout uh, Israel, and he's healing all kinds of people. And because of his fame of healing, multitudes are now following Jesus wherever he goes. So you can just imagine Jesus is just walking down this dirt road, and behind him are just multitudes of people that are following him. And Bartimaeus, he's heard of Jesus, he knows that he's a healer, but as we read the scripture, we're going to find out he knows more than just the fact that he's a healer. Verse 47. Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby. And he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Well, who is the son of David? The Messiah. The Messiah. Bartimaeus is shouting, the Messiah. Now, who's the Messiah? The Messiah is he who is going to come and bring deliverance and healing. So Bartimaeus is proclaiming Jesus to be the Messiah. He's blind. But he's got a word of knowledge about Jesus Christ that he is the Messiah. And because he's the Messiah... He can be healed. So Bartimaeus had heard of Jesus. He knew him to be a healer. And he screams out, Jesus the Messiah, son of David. But what does the crowd do? Verse 48 says, be quiet. <laughs> Many of the people are yelling at Bartimaeus. Which only caused him to yell louder, son of David, have mercy on me. You know, Bartimaeus, he's, he's creating a scene here along the side of this road. you got Jesus walking along with all these people behind him, and he's yelling out, Son of David, Jesus, have mercy on me. And when they yell at him to shut up, he yells even louder because he's pursuing his healing. He's not waiting for his healing. He's not waiting for Jesus to give him his healing. He's going after his healing. He's got faith that this is the Messiah, and the Messiah can heal me. He's not going to let Jesus walk by. And when Jesus heard him, he stopped, and he said, tell him to come here. So you just got to imagine. You got Jesus walking down the road, and you got Bartimaeus on the side yelling and screaming to have mercy on him. And Jesus comes to a complete stop. He comes to a stop because that's his purpose. 
That's the purpose of why Jesus came here. His purpose is in 1 John 3, verse 8. It says that God sent Jesus here to this world to destroy the works of the devil. Blindness is the work of the devil. He says, have mercy on me. Jesus heard being called. This is my purpose. He came to a complete stop. So you can just imagine all the people walking behind him. Jesus comes to a stop, and it's like they all just bump into each other. You know, I can just see it happen. So Jesus says, come here. Tell him to come here. So you got to remember, you got all these crazy people behind him. You know how crazy people are, because these are the same people in just a short time are going to be yelling, crucify Jesus. So they call to the blind man, cheer up. Come on, he's calling you. Two seconds ago, they're telling him to shut up and keep your mouth shut and get out of the way. Now they're saying, come here. Jesus wants to see you. And Bartimaeus threw his threw aside his coat, and he jumped up, and he came to Jesus. And Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? My rabbi, the blind man, said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, Go, for your faith has healed you. And instantly the man could see. And then he followed Jesus with all the rest of the crowd down the road. So here you can see an example of someone who thinks they have faith and someone who's just hoping for healing, believing they're going to be healed, but they're waiting. They're waiting to be healed. They're waiting for the manifestation to occur. This person has faith. Faith. He's pursuing his healing. The person that can heal him is in his presence. He's not going to let him get by without being healed. He screams out, have mercy on me. That just stopped everything that Jesus was doing because it's like I'm being called into action. The devil's done something over there. i got to go destroy what the devil has done. So Bartimaeus, he made a plea to the mercy giver because he knew the purpose of Jesus. Just like the woman who had the issue of blood, she had that faith. She pursued Jesus. She, she's got an issue of blood. She's not even supposed to be in public. But she sneaks out behind a crowd. She knows that she can't touch Jesus because if she touches Jesus, you know, by law, she is going to contaminate Jesus, and he won't. He's got to go through all these rituals to, to be cleansed again. So she just knows and has the faith. If I can just sneak up there and touch his garment, I will be healed. So she is pursuing her healing. Verse forty nine says that Jesus stood still, and he called Bartimaeus to come over to him. All the people switched. They went from screaming, shut up, shut up, to get up, get up, and come over and see what Jesus wants. And this kind of brings up something that we've talked about it before, because you've got all these fickle people following Jesus who can change their thinking in a moment's notice. So. You know, when that has happened, when you're trying to heal someone, you want to ask all these people to leave the room when you're trying to bring about healing because you don't want their faith, you don't want their beliefs to interfere in your faith that you can heal somebody. In verse 50, it says, The blind man cast away his garment, and he came to Jesus. Maybe you don't know what's going on here. The garment is his identity. The garment identifies him as a blind beggar. He doesn't want to be identified as a blind beggar anymore. You know, what you wear identifies you because 
lepers, they wore garments that identified them. You know, the Romans wore garments that identified them. The priests wore garments to be identified that they were priests. So everybody could be identified by your garment. And Bartom Bartimaeus throws his garment aside. He's not going to be a beggar anymore. He casts that aside. He does not want to be identified as a beggar any longer. When he cast that garment aside, was he already healed? No, he was still blind. But he had the faith that in just a few seconds from now, I'm going to be able to see. So faith is not what you have been hoping for. It doesn't come just because you tithe all the time. It doesn't come because you've got 100% attendance at church. You know, that's not faith. Faith is not what you believe. Faith is what is going on spiritually in your heart. <coughs> you see things that are not there as though they are. So Bartimaeus goes to Jesus and he says, What do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus. So again, just like before, Jesus puts it on him. What do you want me to do? What's on your heart? What do you believe? What do you have faith that I can do for you, Bartimaeus? What's your desire? And he says, Rabbi, I want to see. I want to see. Well, this fits right into Jesus' job description. That's why he came here. He came here to destroy the works of the devil. So he's going, that's what I'm here for. And he can see. So your faith has healed you. Now his, his faith in Jesus as the Messiah, the healer, gave him back his sight. Now, the devil had stolen his sight, but Jesus, like I said before, had come to destroy the works of the devil. So that Jesus came to give him back his sight. And faith is the substance and the assurance of things hoped for, but not seen. So he threw away his garment because he had faith. He could see that he was going to be able to see in the spirit. And he, didn't need that. he did not need that garment anymore. So to help you better understand faith, I'm going to divide it up into three different categories. There's proactive faith, there's reactive faith, and there's inactive faith. Inactive faith can basically just be no faith at all. Proactive faith is what we see here in Bartimaeus. We also see it with the woman at with the blood problem. We see it with the paralyzed man at the mat. We see it with the centurion that came to Jesus. Proactive faith, faith means that you're pursuing your healing. You're doing something. You're actively trying to be healed. They all came to Jesus. They all sought their healing. They pursued their healing. Proactive healing. Proactive faith takes action. Proactive faith seizes the moment. And there's plenty of examples in the Bible all about proactive faith where people came out and they sought their healing. And there's also examples of reactive faith. This is where somebody is in the presence of Jesus and they respond, would you like to have healing? Because they responded, because Jesus asked, they accepted so they receive their healing reactively. Now, reactive faith is kind of what you might witness when you go over to Haggad. We go over to Haggad on Wednesdays and we pray for people. So when you ask someone, would you like to receive healing today? And if they say, I would like to receive healing today, that means they are seizing the moment. They didn't seek you out for healing. They didn't there was no action going on. The opportunity arose where they could get healing and they jumped on the opportunity. That's reactive faith. Other examples of reactive faith is maybe you go to a healing conference 
And usually at the healing conference somewhere along the line, they'll say anybody that wants healing, you know, either stand up or come to the front of the room. Well, if you take the opportunity to do that, you're being reactive to the opportunity and you can receive your healing. Inactive faith would be someone who hears the word but doesn't respond. And maybe they believe, maybe they want you to prove that you can heal them, or maybe they're just waiting, waiting for healing to manifest itself, waiting for Jesus to move in their sickness. They're just waiting. They're waiting for somebody else to heal them, and they're not doing anything on their own to receive the healing. Proactive faith, again, is when you seek your healing and you're aggressively going after your healing. Reactive faith is when you respond to the opportunity for healing. And I'm going to give you an example of that from the Bible. You can find that in John 5. John 5. I'm going to read verses 1 through 9. It says, afterwards, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. And inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was the Pool of Bethesda. And it had five covered porches and crowds of sick people, blind, lame, and paralyzed, lay on these porches. And one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. <laughs> And when Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, Would you like to get well? And he said, I can't, sir. For I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. And Jesus told him, Stand up, pick up your mat, walk. And instantly the man was healed. So Jesus asked him, this is an opportunity, do you want to be healed? Now you got to realize this guy's been coming to the well for 38 years. That doesn't mean that he wants to be healed. Not everybody wants to be healed. Got a niece I don't think wants to be healed. <laughs> They're happy with their situation because the world kind of centers around them. People feed them. People prepare their clothes. They wash their clothes for them. They, people carry them to the well. People bring him home in the evening. He gets to sit at the well with his friends that he's known for 38 years. And he probably plays checkers and cards and tells jokes. He's just having a good time every day. He's been doing it for 38 years now. He's content with his life. He doesn't expect anything better. He's not seeking his healing. But Jesus says, do you want to be made well? So when you say, do you want to be made well, he's saying, are you willing to take the responsibility of being well. Because when you become well, you've got different responsibilities than when you're sick, sitting on a mat for 38 years. And Jesus says, rise up. And the man responds to the invitation, so he rises up reactively to the invitation, and he receives his healing. It became instant. Now, Barry Burnett, now Barry Bennett, right? Now Barry Bennett shares a story about a dog on a bed. We've talked about how we can speak healing into people's lives. So just imagine this. You've got a dog on the bed, and the dog is not supposed to be on the bed. So you go, Fluffy, get off the bed. And the dog knows you. And the dog knows your voice. And the dog knows the rules. And the dog gets off the bed. It's the way it's supposed to be. 
Well, sometimes later you go home and instead of Fluffy being on the bed, you find this big black German Shepherd laying on your bed. You don't know that dog. He doesn't know the rules. That dog's got an attitude. And you're feeling a little bit afraid because he's got an attitude and he's growling at you. And you lose all concentration and you lose your power and you lose all of your authority and you say, good doggy. <laughs> you don't say, get off the bed. And the doggy just growls at you because it's not fluffy. You know how to respond to fluffy, but you've got a bigger animal in your case here and you don't know how to respond to it. You don't take the power that you have. You don't take the authority that you have. So many times when we approach sickness, we feel that we have no authority in some areas. We feel comfortable in one area. You know, I can pray for your pain. I can pray for your itching, but you know, bronchitis, I don't know if I can help you with that. You need to go see a doctor. The doctor says you've got cancer. <clears throat> I don't know that dog. I don't know what to do with that dog. What do I do? Well, if you know who you are in Christ, you do the same thing for that dog that you do with any other dog. You say, get off the bed. And the dog gets off the bed. You say, cancer, go. And the cancer goes. You say, pain, leave. And the pain leaves. You speak to the problem. No matter what the problem is, you don't have, they're not always going to be fluffies that you come across. You're going to come across big black German shepherds when you're trying to bring about healing for people that you come across in your ministry. You just need to know what is your place of authority. And you've got to have proactive faith. You go after it because that's who you are in Christ. Now where does that come from? Well, it comes from the heart. It comes from within. You've got to have a relationship with he who does the healing, the Messiah. You've got to have a relationship with the Messiah. Now, You know, when the doctor says, hey, you don't have much longer to live. And you say, oh, I don't agree with that. I don't know that dog. But I know this dog. My dog is getting off the bed. So I don't care what you're saying. I say it's not going to happen. I say I'm going to get better. Because my cancer was nailed to the cross. My cancer was taken away. So I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You don't rebuke the doctor in the name of Jesus because he's just <laughs> doing his job. But you rebuke the problem in the name of Jesus. Because it's what you know in your heart. So is it Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me and heal me? Or is it, I sure hope that Jesus comes by my house today and heals me. Let's wait right here and see what Jesus is going to do today. Maybe he's going to heal me today. I'm going to wait and see what Jesus is going to do. No proactive going on. There's no pursuit of the healing going on right there. So how does faith come? We're talking about faith right now. But how does faith come? Well, we all know that verse 10, Romans 10, 17. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now there's two parts to that. Faith does not come by hearing through your ears because many people can hear the Word of God but they don't have any faith. They don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah even though they hear the Scriptures and they hear the Word. It's not in their heart. They don't see it. Because there's spiritual hearing. That's what we need to have, is spiritual hearing. Faith comes by spiritual hearing. And spiritual hearing comes by the Word of God. 
Where does spiritual hear, hearing come from? Well, we find it in Romans 10.10. 10. And Jesus said, My words are spirit, and they are life. And with the heart, man believes. It's got to be in your heart. It's good to hear with your ears, because if you hear it with your ears, it might work its way down to your heart. So you can get spiritual hearing. But it's got to get to your heart. Until it gets to your heart, you're just believing, you're just having hope, but you don't have faith yet. You've got to have spiritual hearing to get the faith that you need. A lot of people believe, by the way of the flesh, that, uh, that they can will themselves to get well. And there's a lot of truth to this. There's a lot of examples where people can will themselves to get well. But that's not godly faith. That's not divine faith. That's not spiritual faith. Spiritual faith has only one source, and that's God. That's Jesus the Messiah. And you must hear in your spirit. You've got to hear in your spirit the word of God. A lot of Christians express belief in healing. They just don't have the faith for healing yet. And I see myself there many times. They pray for healing and they will it to come. And when it doesn't come, they say, okay, let's fast for a while. So we pray that didn't bring it. Let's fast and let's fast for healing and then will it to come. And then when it doesn't come, you just find out you can't pray for faith, you can't fast for faith, because faith only has one source. It's spiritually hearing the Word of God. You've got to have it in your heart. You've got to have Jesus in your heart. It comes from the heart. That's where you hear the Word of God in your heart. Faith is not something you build. Faith is something you receive. This is John 5.18. Jesus therefore answered them, he said, Most certainly I tell you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father doing, for whatever things he does, these the Son does likewise. Jesus is saying he can't do anything by himself. He can only do what he sees the Father.